Every month I go live on Twitch to listen to your music. Which means ever since starting my channel two years ago, I've listened to over 2,500 demos. And it's been a blast. Even though I've heard some absolute fire in there, a lot of you come into the stream looking for my input on how to improve your songs. So today I want to share some of the most common mistakes I'm hearing on the stream so you can see if you're making them and more importantly, how to fix them, including one simple test that you can do that should fix most of these issues and potentially change the way you approach production. So let's... Note these are all anecdotal, taken from your own personal experience, listen to your music from my stream along with solutions that personally work for me. However, since everyone is on their own unique journey, there might be other better sources or tips that work for you, especially if you make a specific type of music. So take this video more as suggestions for your music rather than actual rules. Either way, comment below if you agree or disagree with any of this. Get into it. I'm gonna start us off with something a little abstract, meaning it's one of those things that's easy to hear but hard to explain. Now, what do I mean by this? Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you can and do if your music so, does the you, same thing that's what makes it sound kind of as well but it's hard to point out exactly what's wrong with it because there is no hook or focus this can happen in melodies in your sounds in your arrangement your drums Ooh, any aspect of your song. How do you fix that? Number one way to do it is to simplify. You want to find one or two elements you want the listener to notice the most and build everything around that. It doesn't even have to be like a repetitive preset. It could be like a repetitive rhythm. Now, if you're in the habit of just making loops and have trouble expanding it, you can do things like split up the layers into different sounds, mix and match different sound combinations. And I have a whole video expanding on this concept that you can watch after this. But what's more important is to find your hook. Because once you start overthinking, it leads to another one of the common mistakes that I hear. But at least this next one is a little easier to point out. Now, I don't want to use words like boring or generic because that's pretty obvious. Like when Lola says to the Apo, Tumabaka, they know they're working on it. And it just sounds like I'm talking down to you and that's just not productive. So I like using a different word. Now, it's okay to be inspired, especially when you're starting out. You probably have that one producer that inspired you to take the plunge into this insane world of music production. But if you use it wrong, you end up sounding like the dollar store version of what already exists. Why do I give y'all so much crap for Super Saws? The answer is derivative sounds. And this can apply to any genre. It's the same reason why modern talking was memed on during the bro step era. For pop people, generic chord progressions, uninspired lyrics. Heck, even hyperpop's got everybody doing Midwest emo guitars now. And I love it. Like we're even getting to the point where people are criticizing FM from B. So you haven't proved your point then. You're just saying that every genre has its tropes and what's the point of complaining about stuff that makes up that genre? When I complain, it's because I'm hearing saws on the same chords, on the same future bass rhythm. This is gonna sound harsh, but you're not doing anything different from what's already out there. The thing is, music is cyclical. There comes a time when certain sounds or techniques come out and it's groundbreaking. But as people get inspired by it and start to copy it and refine it, it goes one of two ways. It either evolves or it stagnates. You have to decide how to use that technique to push the genre forward. Also, don't just be inspired by one source. Get inspired by multiple places. Do weird mixing and matching of stuff that doesn't exist. Combine them and find that balance of fresh and familiar. And hey, maybe you do like Elenium a lot, but if you're gonna go down that route, you better make sure your execution is perfect which means you got to deep dive into the genre you want to make like really understand and see what elements make it up look up youtube channels that break down songs track by track 
and subscribe. All right, once you got a good grasp on that, you need to find that polish. If you're struggling to make your music sound as good as the songs you hear from your influences, that's where today's sponsor, Mixia, comes in. Mixia is actually by DistroKid, and members can put the finishing touches on their songs in minutes, getting a customized and polished result that makes you confident to upload and share it with the world. Unlike old plugins that tried to make your music as loud as humanly possible, because it's through DistroKid, you can upload directly to streaming services and the master is optimized for them. So, how's it work? For $99 a year, you can master unlimited tracks with unlimited previews with a free download included just to try it out. All you gotta do is upload the file, listen and customize with a simple interface, and download the finished track. From there, you can head straight to upload from DistroKid and upload your brand new polished mastered track. Thank you so much to Mixia and DistroKid for sponsoring this video and you can use my VIP link below to get even more discounts. Warning! Before you even consider this type of final polish to your song, there's another common problem that comes up when listening to your music. In music, you can have a banger of a tune, but sometimes it just sounds a little muddy. What I mean by this is your drums sound like wet noodles, your basses are thin, we can't hear your leads, or just sounds like... Okay. Most of the time, this just comes from inexperience. But there's a common misconception going around, which is an over-reliance on technicalities. You know the producer I'm talking about. The, um, actually, you need to use dynamic EQs, not parametric ones, and multiband compression and gain state. But wait a second, Ash. This all sounds correct. And yeah, it is. But... When you start obsessing over those details, you start to sound a little bit more like... Do you make that with a Paco Jet? Exactly right. You know, a Paco Jet can produce a powderized, uh, snow-like texture. Cool. Yeah, I have one. Now, some of y'all have already made up your minds, but that type of technicality is so extremely situational. You end up closing yourself off to gaining any actual insight and start paralyzing yourself from just making music from expressing your art. It's one of his classics. Mm -hmm. Are made with alginate. Alginate as in... Um... As an algae. There was an episode of Breaking Bad. Walt is about to get caught for all of his shenanigans and the evidence is on a laptop. Now, we could have gone through a complex heist, hired a bunch of people in order to take this laptop back, but his partner, Jesse, spurts out... Or what about a magnet? What? Magnet, what about it? Because sometimes the solutions to some of the most complex problems are really easy. There are some great resources that can get into deep, complex solutions into fixing a muddy mix, but their emphasis on these techniques can cause you to lose focus from much simpler solutions. Especially if you're starting out, I'm not saying with magnet. Yeah! So what is the magnet of music production? Woo! Clean. It's getting rid of bad samples, wrong sounds, clashing sounds. I want you to listen to your favorite songs and try to pick out the top three sounds. Then with programs like Splice, it's as easy as a Google search to find those sounds. And next time you put a song together, assemble it with those top three in mind. As you continue to do this, I want you to pay attention to what sounds work together the best. Let's take dubstep for example. A kick that lacks any top end is gonna get lost as soon as you put the sub bass in. Going back to my super saw friends. An over-reliance on super saws will actually make your song sound thin unless you add a bass to it. And these are all changes you can make without even touching an EQ. Remember your inspiration. Despite all the different compressors in the world, your music is meant to evoke an emotional response. The way you get there doesn't matter as much as everybody thinks. Now I will say, yes, mixing does get a lot deeper than this, but that's a skill you're gonna need to practice. And I'm not saying those details aren't important. 
they are. But if you don't pay attention to the easy, but not so obvious step, the magnet, then any of those techniques aren't gonna matter anyway. Assemble your sounds according to what the song needs and the mud magically fades away. Speaking of assembling songs, there is something you need to be careful and that I get way too annoyed at. Dude, seven minutes? There is nothing wrong with long songs. Strobe will continue to be a banger. But some of y'all are sending me stuff that do not deserve to be that length. No. That's right, I'm talking about the songs that don't deserve to be long. And this might be harsh hearing it, especially if you've spent time on the song, if that song you made has meaning to you. But the reality is you have to assume that nobody cares. This is something as a new producer really sucks to hear. Five minute song. Your listeners might not have the same connection to that song as you do. So it's your job to convince the listener that they do. It all goes back to arrangement. If you have overly repetitive parts, try to reduce those. Go through every single section of your song and really ask yourself, does this need to be here? We, uh, does it catch your attention when this section of the song comes in? Especially in the intro. I want the first 10 seconds to grab me right away. Think about sending your song to your dream label. They listen to probably 10 times the amount of demos I listen to. And if you're not getting their attention in the first 10 seconds, then what are you doing? There. Needs vocals too. Like a little trick I like to do is if you have most of your song written is try to implement parts later in the song into the intro, kind of like a teaser. And I'm not saying all of this from like some high place that, uh, ooh, look at me, I'm better than you. Dude, I do the same thing. When I'm in the thick of it, I've had a song where it's like three buildups in a row and I'm like, what am I doing? Sometimes you just don't notice that your song is getting lengthy. So you gotta take some time away. Step away for like a day or two, then come back and figure out what's not actually working. Save those songs for your true fans. But no, you say, wait for the second drop. If I'm halfway through your song and I'm bored of it, and you tell me, wait till the second drop, I promise it's good. This is another form of coping. You're blaming your own bad arrangement and hoping that you did something good. If you believe in that second drop so much, just make it the first, easy peasy. As you noticed me going through this entire video most of these mistakes end up being arrangement and composition issues so let me present to you the one thing you can do to avoid the majority of these mistakes i want you to ask yourself have i lost the plot you know when you watch a movie or tv show it has a beginning middle and end your song should be the same way when your songs are too long when they don't have a focus or are just boring in general you've lost the plot if you've been producing for only let's say six months or under you need to be finishing as many songs as you can figure out your dot enough to craft a song from beginning to end. I don't care if you use loops, midi packs, samples, whatever. Copy the exact structure of a favorite artist or remix a song. Just get a song from beginning to end and do that as many times as you can. Until you can show somebody your music and they can listen to it all the way till the end, you're not ready for technical feedback. I know this is the last thing a new producer wants to hear because you're excited about all the depth of music production, all the plugins, the sound designs, the possibilities that can be achieved with making music on a computer. But you can't use any of those to your advantage until you at least construct a song that's listenable from start to finish. This means most of these common mistakes lead back to asking, have I lost the plot? Now, I had this whole section where I talked about people that would disagree with all of my points, but then I realized this channel is not for the IDM dollless tech heads who believe that any other form of music is inferior and you have to have a certain level of intellect to understand. This video is for the ones who want to just express their art in the most honest way possible. To everybody who's still here and is sticking with me, y'all are legends. But this begs the question, where do you go from here with all of this knowledge? Where do we take it? At the end of the day, music is still subjective. We have our own biases and preferences when it comes to the music we enjoy and the music we make. And it's okay to not be a perfect producer. Don't let the lack of knowledge from a specific topic stop you from opening up your DAW and just making a song. The act of trying is enough. The whole, oh, once you buy this $900 plug-in suite, then your music will sound professional and you'll finally get signed. That ain't it. 
that's not the way you'll actually improve. And of course, the goal I said of getting a song listenable from beginning to end, that's tough. Definitely not easy. It's gonna take a lot of practice. But when you at least approach it as something to work towards, then producing doesn't seem as overwhelming. Plus, to anybody who sends music into the stream, you're already taking like the most important step. You're actively looking to improve. It takes a lot of guts to create something, put it out into the world to literally be judged, and you've already done that. Now go make some bangers.